Welcome to the Jennifer J. Hammond Podcast. Jennifer is a licensed realtor, educator, speaker, and best-selling author. Jennifer's goal is to help you find your yay in every day. Jennifer is grateful for the opportunity to educate, empower, and inspire you with powerful conversations, insights, and new viewpoints. Here's your host, Jennifer J. Hammond. know every week I'm always looking for a new viewpoint or a new way that we can look at not only real estate but who is who in the world is creating those yays that I'm so famous for but also that everyone needs to find I mean this year year 2021 has been already quite a year with the pandemic and transitions that people are having a lot of challenges and grief is something that again whew, it's one that a lot of us are are really getting a little stuck and we need to be able to work through it. So I'm very excited about my next guest. This is Susan Zimmerman, and she's going to help us talk about some interesting insights that she has from her own life. So Susan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad to have you. I know that your your story is quite a story. So let's start there. I I would love for you to share, yeah, your experience, your story, and, you know, why you have such a mission to share now. Sure. Well, thank you. I have, I am, I've got this odd combination of credentials. It is chartered financial consultant and licensed marriage and family therapist. And what I found in doing financial planning is that when people move even or any kind of life transitions that bring about significant change, that brings forth some large and maybe very small, but but they matter grief cycles. And so one of the subjects I studied then when I went into grad school for psychology was grief and loss and how to get through transitions in healthy ways. Because so very often in this crazy culture of ours, and I won't even mention the COVID culture of the last year, but we tend to overlook and never have been educated much about what that experience is really like. It's a natural response to loss, but the first times we go through it can be very unsettling. So it's worth knowing about. Absolutely. And I know that when people are, well, number one, because of the pandemic, I I use my air quotes, the idea of home is very different. And a lot of people right now, the real estate market is going wild with people buying and selling. I'm licensed as a real estate agent in Virginia, D.C. and Maryland. So I can tell you from our area, it's just crazy. But as I talk to people around the country, they're also experiencing this where people are deciding to make a change that maybe they put off, but maybe they're just their life is different now. And partly they may have some loss that they're confronting. Like for instance, they may have lost a job. Unfortunately, some have lost a loved one because of the pandemic. So what kind of things would you share as far as getting over that loss and being able to move through a transition? Thank you for that really good question. One of the first things I share with people who are going through this, and I have four words that are what I call the un, the unwords, they're words, but any kinds of losses leave us unsettled, unfamiliar with new circumstances in our life. We feel uneasy and so much of it is unpredictable. And so that applies certainly to the many changes that have happened in COVID, but also from what would seem like an innocent thing, which may have been due to good news too, changing residences. But what I bring next into it is the the acronym HOPE to help people more easily remember what I call the four habits of hope. Because what happens is with moves, there is Part, there are parts of it that are 
unexpected, like I said, with the un um, or unpredictable. And the four habits of hope, you start with honoring whatever emotions it is that you're going through. And that's paying respect to them and not ignoring them or pushing them down. And ideally having a confidant you can just vent to and let them validate those feelings because validation is the most important need when we're grieving, even when the losses might be defined by someone else's, no big deal. So the O in hope is for being open to what the experience is teaching us. There's usually something positive to go along with all that unsettled element to it. And then P in hope is to persevere because sometimes you may feel like giving up. I know with moves, a lot of times it's so chaotic that just the move itself itself makes you question, why am I doing this again? Especially if it was purely by choice. And then the E in hope is to encourage. Encourage yourself. Find your inner courage. That's what encourage means. And that way you can hang on to that. So honor, open, persevere, and encourage yourself. I love that. And it's always nice to have an acronym so that you can go back and look at um, those words, and, and then we'll kind of re-examine them in a new unit of time. Because, and I would love for you to talk a little bit about how each time we end up with a loss, it's different. And sometimes it's ripping open an old wound, but like a loss of a job versus the loss of maybe a loved one, those are different kinds of losses, but they still have a need to be healed with hope. Right. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. So true. There are so many kinds. And I'm always quick to remind all of us that transitions or losses can be the result of something positive that happened. Some classic examples are empty nests. Well, those happen because there was a graduation, you know, so something positive and celebrated. But then there's this loneliness and new circumstances retirements, you know, that it can be the result of something you worked hard and planned and achieved, but then it's different than you expected and you have to make those mental adjustments to go with it. And it can be loss of a loved, dear person, of course. And that's when the grief cycle is important to understand. It's not as predictable as some of those phases tend to be, but they can help you know that you're not going crazy, that these are common characteristics that all humans go through. I like the expression that we're not humans having a soul experience, we're souls having a human experience. I have to interrupt you there because (laughs) I, I, when my mom was going through cancer treatment, um, she was very different in a lot of ways because of course she had a a brain tumor and they had just taken you know a saw and cut open her her head and so all her hair was gone and she you know looked a little bit like uh, Frankenstein with all those stitches and it was it was shocking to look at her and I I walked into um, her she was trying to do some physical therapy after the operation and there was a, uh, one of the people was trying to help her. She had a little contraption. She was trying to learn to breathe um, her lungs oh. again. And the doctor said, it's amazing that um, you're, you know, you're having this much trouble given the fact you've never smoked. And, and I was like, what? Never smoked? Oh, my mother has smoked. She smoked cigarettes for many years. And then, you know, for the truth is she smoked marijuana for many, many years. Oh my God. And, I, and she immediately looked at me and started stamping her feet. And she was like, I can't believe you're such a tattletale, 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 <laughs> tattletale. Why are you such a little tattletale? And I, oh. I was just like, so taken aback by one, she's acting like a child and the doctor needs to know whether you smoked or not. This is right. not about lying and it's not about being, a, you know, again, I use my air quotes, tattletale. It's, it's just about being truthful. And, and I was just sitting there shaking my head and I looked down and the shirt she was wearing said, I, that quote you just said, really? I am not 
what is it? I am not a, uh, a human. Spirit. Have yeah, I am not a, a human having a spiritual experience. I am a spirit having a human experience. And yeah. one, I she'd never owned that. I don't. I don't even know where she got that shirt from. And I just looked at her and I looked down and I, I knew she would be dead very soon. Oh, it, it was like one of those moments where you're like, okay, she's being a little bit of a brat, you know, with mm-hmm. making this scene that I'm a tattletale because I told the fact that she was a smoker. But right. two, I looked at her shirt and I knew that, and we talked about the shirt and the saying and such. Mm-hmm. It's so important that I believe we all realize that we are spirits and that we are so powerful and that mm-hmm. we are here having a human experience for better or for worse. We are here right. having that human experience. And it is so important that we find mm-hmm. hope, that we yeah. find the silver lining and that we make it through all of our challenges. And I'm very sorry that your your mother died after that. It's I was hoping you were going to say she got better, so that's not always the case. <laughs> yes. No, no, I think it, but I think it's also interesting because each of us have our scars. You know, I I I tend to be the person who's always so happy, and I love sharing. Yes, yeah. but it's not that I didn't have challenges, and it's not that my life doesn't have those, those painful moments, but they mm. also filled with such joy. And, you know, I can recall the, those times in the hospital and she was hilarious because oh. she was a spoiled rotten little brat at some times. And then she was <laughs> super funny. And then there are times when she just was mean. And, and it's interesting because trying to pretend that those things don't exist, mm-hmm. I think is when we try to pretend we are somebody we're not. Yeah. So it's part of the reason I love that quote so much. And I just can't, I'm, nobody's ever quoted that one to me. Um, <laughs> right. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's well, serendipity. They say, I guess we were supposed to meet. <laughs> we were supposed to meet and that was definitely supposed to be shared. So mm. I am curious. So for people who are looking for hope and they're looking for ways to get through the pandemic, what yeah. what kind of advice would you give for somebody who who really feels trapped inside their home right now? Sure. Well, one of the things I would start with is an acronym near where you can place where you're at in this cycle of grief or just feeling of being unsettled or even that empty feeling. So near helps us figure that out by starting with numb is one of the very earliest experiences when you've had a loss. So if you're numb, you're at the very front end of things most typically. And then secondly, emotions of multiple kinds, but especially when you're experiencing emotions that are brand new to you, you've never had a feeling like this before. Some people during the pandemic have expressed a feeling of betrayal, like Mm -hmm betrayal from just the circumstance or betrayal of you name it, you know, the leaders or whatever. So then the other thing is in near is a for adjusting. If you've started to make adjustments and goodness knows the population has made significant adjustments along the way during this pandemic. And so it is a, it's a positive sign that you're adapting and starting to have small steps of acceptance in it. And then finally, rebuilding is important too, because it's noticing that some of the things that are no longer present, whether it's situations or just people, there are elements to the future that matter again, and you can focus on it. So it's rebuilding given what you currently have. So not all is lost. And that rebuilding step helps that future focus bring some motivation. Yeah, I think that's so beautiful, especially 
uh, one of the things that resonates with me is that future in, and especially in real estate, what to me, what is your dream house? What is your next home? Because so often we were not living in it and, and it needs to be the next one. And so can you create that future? Even if, can you, can you start first with creating it in your mind's eye? Maybe then you put it up on yeah. you know, a wall and, and, you know, you, you continue to keep looking at it so that you can, Again, find a way toward that future, you know, and there's, mm-hmm. there's all sorts of different steps in that, but be able to even look at the future and be okay with it and feel like the future is safe. Cause I think the pandemic for some of us, it, it made people feel like they were trapped in their homes and that there wasn't a future. There wasn't a future abundance of my home feeling like an amazing place where I can have lots of my friends and family over sure. it felt like everything was dangerous. It was a dangerous environment. And yet it, it's not true. There is a future and we have a beautiful yeah. future ahead of us. And, and we just need to focus on that. I think that's one of those secrets that so often is overlooked is that we have power and much more power than I, I believe so often yeah. we see readily, readily. So we have to, we have to intentionally focus on future. That's exactly right. I couldn't agree more. It, it takes some intentionality for sure, Jennifer. And that's the thing that isn't necessarily a first occurrence in our minds is that, okay, how can I do this? A lot of times the first mental thought is this is terrible it's not what i expected i miss my old neighborhood we have two children that moved during the pandemic into different neighborhoods different part of the city and they really really missed the old neighborhoods and mm-hmm. found that they were surprised at the intensity of that longing and that missing and so they did acknowledge the positive aspects of what their new location brought to them. And it really did have to be an exercise in being intentional about it. So that's a great point that you've made. Well, and thank you. I love all of the acronyms. I mean, so go ahead. Will you, um, so you did two different acronyms, HOPE and then NEAR. Will you refresh us on those? Yes. The HOPE acronym is for honoring your experience Uh, regardless of what those emotions are, they deserve respect. Being open to what it's teaching you, persevering even when you don't feel like it, and encouraging yourself. NEAR is, the acronym is for the feelings and the phases that we go through, and they can flow back and forth. They don't go linear, linear in the same direction. So NEAR is for numb, emotional, adjusting, and rebuilding. Yay! <laughs> Yay. And I think it's so important that we, we do all of those things that we're rebuilding. I mean, adjusting, you know, again, that's part of one of those constants. The universe is, is this is a place where nothing stays exactly the same. Things are constantly changing. So learning to adjust to the changes and I'm with right. everybody else. I mean, I'm very resistant and I've learned as I've gotten older, I, I'm even less um, happy about change, 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 change. I got, I get, I get in my comfortable little habits and I like to stay there. And what I've realized is that that's, that's not good for any of us. It's, you know, we have to learn to grow and adjust and that's just part of life. (laughs) It sure is, isn't it? Yes. And that, I use the word adjusting as opposed to accepting because acceptance takes more time and it can be tough when, especially if something unfair has happened or the the move is because of something that was beyond your control and it wasn't something you would have chosen right now or perhaps ever. So it's adjusting is, is easier to take in and eventually it can lead to an acceptance of it. But that, takes away the pressure. And I love that you say that, you know, Jack Canfield, who author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, and he also did the book, The Success Principles. One of the things he talks about in The Success Principles is that you can react to a situation in in a variety of different ways. And you get a choice in how you react to that. And I, I, so I love the fact that you said adjusting, not accepting, because if you just accept, then you, sometimes you could perceive that as, um, 
not being able to do anything about it and feeling right. the effect of it. Like, like there's nothing, like you have no choice and yet you do, yeah. you have a choice. You just it's, have a choice of you adjust this way or this way or this way. Right. It's like that feel that it's a loss of power when you just try right. to force yourself into acceptance and a loss of ability. And so it is more interactive the other way. I was going to mention, too, that I encourage people to expand their definition of what a loved one is. We tend to think mm-hmm. of a loved one as a human being, of course, <laughs> but it's also just favorite circumstances or favorite places, even favorite spots in our house. And so whether it's the yard, the the corner of the den or something like that, those are loved ones. And so when you're making a change in where you reside, those loved spaces and loved places are changing. And so that's going to trigger a little loss cycle. Yeah. Mm, love places and love. I love that. That's beautiful because again, everybody has a different one. And like for my brother, you know, it's in front of whatever musical instrument, whether it's a guitar or piano or whatnot. For my sister, it's very much about being around the plants. She likes to see oh, yes. the plants, which of course she will not do if anybody else is listening. <laughs> it's such a shame because she has such a beautiful voice. But believe me, all those plants they flower and bloom all the time. And so we know the singing is, is a happy place for her. So everybody needs to find that place that again, brings them happiness. And even inside their home, finding those different locations is critical. So I know we're just about out of time. I want to make sure that um, I ask you my question that I ask every guest, which is I'm famous for saying yay. So I'm curious, How do you celebrate yays every day? Oh, that's such a fun question. Thank you for that. Well, I do have what I call the liberated way to listen. And the the way for that is to learn to listen to yourselves. Robert White, the poet, once said that if we talk to everybody else the way we talk to ourselves, we wouldn't have a friend left on earth. So the the little program for that three steps to ACE, how to be an ACE listener and excel, ask yourself questions about what was the best part of today. Confirm back so that you cement it in and know that even if it was a bad day, something good about it happened. And then encourage yourself. That's twice I've used the word encourage, but it's so important to to find your inner strength. And that's what the encourage step does for that. It elevates your spirit. So that's what I do to get good things out of each day. Yay. 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 (laughs) Definitely. Will you share people how they can get a hold of your book and find out more about you? Sure. Thank you. Well, my book Rays of Hope is on my website, which is mindfulplanning.com. And of course, it's on Amazon and places too. And then I also have a blog that's called raysofhope.us. And the book is on there. And along with many articles about these very topics, transitions, losses that we may not have even recognized and how to acknowledge them and move through those in healthy ways. Well, beautiful. I am so grateful. Thank you so much for being with us. And as we go off air, will you share, uh, lift your voice and say yay with me? Yes, I want to. Perfect. Yay. 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 Hi, I'm Jack Canfield. You may know me as the co-author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. And if you want more help in getting from where you are to where you want to be, I want to encourage you to listen to the Jennifer Hammond Show 